Just like normal proteins, enzymes can be damaged by certain factors. So today, we're going to look at how the body prevents this and actually optimizes conditions to suit enzymes. A great way to improve your understanding and boost your grades is with my study along workbooks. These are specifically made to use alongside my videos and contain loads of tasks and exam questions. By downloading them, you support me in continuing to make these videos. Get yours now from emmatheteachy.com. I've mentioned before that enzymes are a special type of protein that can catalyze reactions in living organisms. They do this by having an active site that is a specific shape for a substrate molecule to bind to. Keeping this specific shape is vital to the enzyme working properly. If the active site changes shape, the substrate can no longer bind to it. There are two factors that can alter the shape of the active site and therefore affect enzyme function. The first is temperature. This graph shows how temperature affects the rate of reaction and you need to be able to explain every part of it. Just like in normal reactions, increasing the temperature will increase the rate of reaction. This is because the enzyme and substrate molecules have got more kinetic energy resulting in more successful collisions, and therefore more reactions. The optimum temperature is where enzyme activity is at its highest. In humans, this temperature is around 37 degrees Celsius, as this is the temperature at which our enzymes work best. In other organisms, it can be different. Increasing the temperature beyond the optimum temperature will cause the enzyme activity to decrease. This is because the enzyme has been denatured. Let's take a moment to see what this word means. Hopefully you recall from the lock and key theory video that enzymes are made from chains of amino acids that have been folded to give them their specific shape. This structure is actually held together by weak forces between the amino acids. High temperatures can break these forces, causing the amino acid chains to change shape. This alters the shape of the active site, which we call denatured. This is an important word to learn. When the enzyme is denatured, the substrate molecules can no longer bind to the active site, and the reaction will slow down or stop altogether. Enzymes are also affected by pH. This is how acidic or alkaline their environment is. Each enzyme will have an optimum pH, and this can vary in the digestive system. For example, the protease produced in the stomach has a low optimal pH. The stomach secretes hydrochloric acid to maintain the acidic environment so the protease can function efficiently. Changing the pH too far above or below an enzyme's optimal pH can also denature the enzyme. It does this by changing the shape of its active site. Changing the pH affects the charges on amino acids and this changes their folding structure. Maintaining the right pH is important for efficient digestion. Speaking of efficient digestion, let's talk about bile. In the digestive system video, we mentioned that bile is produced in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and acts in the small intestine. Now let's look at what it actually does. Enzymes produced in the pancreas, over here, and the small intestine, over here, work best in alkaline conditions. When food leaves the stomach and enters the small intestine, some of the hydrochloric acid comes along with it. Bile is an alkaline liquid, so it is able to neutralize this HCl that comes from the stomach. This maintains the right alkaline conditions needed for the enzymes in the small intestines to work properly. Bile has another function. It helps with the digestion of fats by emulsifying them. This means that they're physically broken down from larger droplets into smaller droplets. This provides a much larger surface area for enzymes to act upon, and this increases the rate of digestion. Hopefully you can see this in the diagram here. It's important to note that bile is not an enzyme, as it isn't chemically breaking down the fat molecule into different molecules, it's just physically making it into smaller pieces. Okay, let's try some quick questions. Pause the video and give these questions a go, and then press play when you're ready to mark the answers. Number one, name two factors that can affect the rate of enzyme action. It's temperature and pH. 
2. Enzymes are killed if the temperature falls below their optimum temperature. This is a student's answer to a question about enzymes. Improve their answer. Well, the first thing we can notice is that they've said enzymes are killed, which is incorrect. Enzymes can only be denatured. And they also said if the temperature falls below their optimum temperature. Well, this is wrong. Below the optimum temperature doesn't denature enzymes. It's if the temperature rises too far above the optimum temperature. That's when denaturation happens. You could also have explained what happens when the temperature does fall below the optimum temperature. And this is just that the enzymes and substrate molecules will have less kinetic energy, so there are less successful collisions, and therefore the rate of reaction slows down. 3. Explain how bile improves the efficiency of digestion. Bile neutralizes stomach acid, entering the small intestines, maintaining an alkaline pH for the enzymes of the small intestines to work properly or at their optimum. Bile also emulsifies fats into smaller droplets, increasing their surface area for enzymes to act on. Both functions increase the rate of digestion. Just a side note that in the next video, you will learn the name of the enzyme that actually breaks down fats. And if you did know that, you could include that in your answer too. How did you do on the questions? There are some specific digestive enzymes that you need to know a little bit more about. Click here to learn about them and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll get lots more GCSE science help. Just click that red button down below. Thank you and bye.